Welcome everybody. Um, my name's Pat Kluver and I work for the Victorian Farmers Federation. Uh, before, we'd like, before we start, I'd just like to thank the Victorian Farmer Federation for um, sponsoring today and Agriculture Victoria who are sponsoring the project through the Enhancing Biosecurity and Animal Welfare Project and Developing Community Understanding Project, which has been delivered by the Victorian Farmers Federation. We have two, we have a speaker today and at the end, that's gonna be Stephanie Jones of Cantar Public. And at the end of Stephanie's presentation, we will have a panel discussion where we'll be joined by David Yahenke, the VFF president. So if you have any questions, remember to enter them in the question section and we'll try to get them at the end of the talk. I'm now going to introduce Stephanie and get started. So Stephanie, Stephanie Jones has over 20 years experience in delivering insight and development and implementing successful strategies to deliver growth and outcomes for the Australian companies in Australia and the Australian government. She's highly skilled uh, understanding business issues and applying her experience and knowledge to create evidence-based approaches that provides the clients with the clarity that they need. Now, what, what the purpose of this research was to actually is to, the project overall is to try and increase the understanding of, uh, of agriculture, try and get a handle on what people are concerned about and what they understand about. And this is going to inform a communications project, which will be hopefully rolling out in the next couple of months. So I'm gonna hand over to Stephanie. And um, there, Stephanie, you got it? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Um, so as Pat said, the objective of the research is to understand the Victorian community's views and farmers' views on um, current Victorian agricultural issues. Um, with the intent of feeding into a communication strategy to increase the community's trust in local agriculture. Um, this was a, a really comprehensive research project. It comprised, it comprised two stages, a qualitative stage and a quantitative stage. So we began with focus groups and in-depth interviews with the Victorian community and Victorian farmers. And then for our community quantitative work, we used a stratified sampling approach. So that just made, made sure that we had the right sample by gender, age and location to have a representative sample of 2000 um, Victorian um, residents. And then we also had a um, stratified sample for farmers to ensure we had representation across industry. Now, I'll just flick. So for the agenda today, I'm just gonna move things around on my screen. For the agenda today, we'll start off by looking at the key insights. Um, then we'll look at the overall perspective about farming and attitudes about the Victorian farming sector. Then we'll deep dive into the three main issues we explored, which were animal welfare, chemical use, and environmental sustainability. Then we'll briefly look at the far, um, changes being made by farmers in these areas. And then I'll finish by taking you through the community segmentation um, and recommendations for the communication strategy. Okay, so in terms of the overall findings, firstly, the community is very positive about Victorian farmers and COVID has actually increased the appreciation of local food production. Most Victorians don't really know a lot about farming practices and there still exists a very um, stereotypical view of family farmers, which is good and bad. It means that um, while Victorians are very sympathetic towards farmers, there's still a view that Victorian, that Victorian farmers and farming practices are traditional and change is needed. Most Victorians still eat meat and it's definitely a social norm. Uh, most feel that animals are being treated really well in Victoria. Most Victorians think it's important to have high animal welfare standards for farm animals. Um, while farms are seen as having high standards, there is some concern over the treatment of animals in transport and at abattoirs. In terms of um, chemicals being used on farm, they're seen as really complex and confusing. And there was just high levels of overall concern about it. Um, people don't really know a lot and they feel like maybe it's something they should be concerned about. 
There was also concern about climate change on the future of farming, um, but less understanding about specific issues contributing to climate change. And just in terms of farmers, most farmers are making changes across all three areas of um, chemical use, um, animal welfare standards and um, sustainability. These changes are being made to ensure the sustainability of their farms and the environment. So now we'll go into the overall perceptions of farming. So just a quick note when we're looking at the graphs, because I've used the same graphs, graphs throughout the report, the dark grey indicates strongly agree, the lighter grey is somewhat agree, the light grey here is neutral and the darker greys are disagree. So the key take out here is that Victorians feel very positive about Victorian farmers and think they're doing a good job. Farmers are viewed as hardworking and they're viewed as dealing with really tough conditions and uncertain conditions and facing many challenges. Victorians are concerned about the future of farming in Victoria. 76% were concerned about the impact of climate change on farming and 77% were concerned about foreign ownership. And they were mainly concerned about foreign ownership and the impact of that on the supply of food locally and also the standards of farming. So in terms of the implications for the comms, so I've done a sort of a key takeout for every slide. The impact is that there's an opportunity for the comms to actually build on and confirm the current levels of community positivity towards farmers. Now we looked at the impact of COVID on people's attitudes towards farmers and COVID has definitely led to a greater appreciation of local farming. This came up spontaneously in our focus groups um, when they realised how fortunate we are to have local food production and very much be assured of food security. And farmers also said that they had noticed a greater appreciation of their industry, um, especially now they were considered an essential service. So in terms of the campaign timing, a comms campaign timing, it's a really good time to run the campaign as the community is more likely to engage with the content, the more likely to be interested in the content because of their new sort of appreciation of um, local food production. So in general, most Victorians agree that they do try and buy locally to support farmers. Um, participants in the focus, group, focus groups talked about how they associate local food with high quality. There is a sort of a sizable minority of about four in 10 Victorians who are mostly concerned with price and taste and don't really think about where their food is from. So you can see here in the graph, 80% try and buy locally and about four in 10 don't really think where their food is from. Um, and here's a great quote. I want to support local. That's why I go to local farmers, markets or butchers. For me, it's about supporting the farmers and knowing they give you a good product, not necessarily about the practices. So in terms of the comms campaign, technical issue. It's about reiterating the benefits of buying locally both in terms of the quality and environmental sustainability, and also reminding Victorians of the benefits of supporting the local economy, especially during tough times like COVID, and this may tip back people into a local focus. Now, you may not be surprised to know, but um, most Victorians don't really know much about farming practices in Victoria. So six in 10 Victorians agreed that they don't know much about it and a further 20% were sort of undecided if they do. So all up 80% have a bit of a knowledge gap. Um, in our qualitative research, people said that most of what they hear about farming is through the media. So they're less likely to have a connection, a personal connection with farmers. So it's something sort of they're hearing about passively. They're not likely to go and try and find out information, but they're just likely to hear it on like Channel 9, um, sort of hear it on the news about how farmers um, are working. And also the stories people talked about that they're most likely to hear is stories about how farmers are doing it tough. Um, one third also felt that farmers are very traditional and a lot needs to change. And a further third were pretty undecided about if they were traditional. So almost two thirds are at risk of thinking that farming is traditional in Victoria. 
And in our qualitative research, participants spoke of the fact that farmers would be able to deal with the many challenges at the moment and they needed significant um, government help. So again, there's an opportunity in the media to highlight modern farm, family farming and to create the content. So they don't just have the doing it tough stories, but also the innovation and the responses to challenge. And building on the knowledge that farming can be tough, but provides some of the practical examples of how, um, how farmers are adapting to the challenges in the local environment. So respondents were asked to list um, we're, we're provided with a list of nine ways that Victorian farmers can contribute to society and they were asked to rank how important they were and also how well they felt farmers were currently contributing in this way. So we have a quadrant here. So in the top quadrant, so basically, sorry, on the x-axis you can see that's whether or not farmers are achieving on these nine factors and on the y-axis that's how important they felt the factors were. So in terms of this quadrant here, these are the factors that the community thinks are important and they also think farmers are achieving. So the community thinks that Victorian farmers are providing safe food, healthy and nutritious food, and providing food that tastes good. And they also think that farmers are making a contribution to the economy. So these are the things they expect farmers to do and they also think that the things that they think farmers are achieving. So the community has evidence for those things. They know from their own experience that the food they get is safe and nutritious and tastes good. The other things that the community also thinks it's important that farmers um, provide are around farming practices. So that's that they treat animals humanely, farming provides a good living, and that farmers maintain um, biodiversity, environmental sustainability. And these are the things that are less visible to the community. So they're less likely to have the evidence that um, the farmers are achieving this. And as we know from the previous question, um, a lot of Victorians don't know much about farming. So I think the shortfall in achievement here is more about a knowledge gap rather than the community. Um, it's sort of a knowledge gap is contributing to this gap. We asked farmers what was important to consider for their farm, and you won't be surprised to learn that farmers consider it extremely important to consider many factors. So here we have um, strongly agree in the dark green, and you can see that most farmers agree that it's extremely important to think about quality, produce, finances, animal welfare, environmental sustainability, providing an income. Um, and as one farmer told me in the qualitative research, in one day a husband could do accounting, repair a technical device, look after the animals, and the list went on. But I think it would be safe to say that most of the community wouldn't know that farmers were skilled in so many areas. And again, there's that knowledge gap of all the skills that farmers have and bring to the business to produce, um, to produce local food. So we asked farmers um, whether or not they consider um, community concerns in their farming practices. Um, and the majority agree that they do feel that their industry is actually meeting community expectations. The majority also agree 68% that it is important to respond to community concerns in their farming practices. And most farmers don't believe there is a time or cost barrier to considering community concerns. Um, there was also a view that Victorians really don't know how their food is produced, and I think that would be fair to say. Um, and again, although this is an issue, I think COVID has encouraged more awareness of local food production or more appreciation of local food production. So now we'll delve into the one of the issues we explored, which is around community perceptions of animal welfare. So firstly, just to provide the context, um, most Victorians are still eating meat. 90% indicated that they consumed meat. Um, it's very much still the norm to eat meat. 62% um, agreed that would be very unusual in their circle of friends to be a vegetarian or a vegan. Most think it's really important for kids to eat meat, 76% agreed. Um, some people are eating less meat because of health concerns. 43%, a significant minority, are eating less meat because it's not healthy to consume too much meat. And 33% eat, eat, are eating less meat because of concerns about animal welfare. So 
So again, while most Victorians are still eating meat, some are reducing their consumption due to health concerns or animal welfare concerns. In terms of the impact of animal welfare um, in the day-to-day -day buying of, of meat, it does play a factor. Um, three quarters of Victorians strongly agree that they would feel more comfortable eating meat knowing that the animal was humanely treated. Um, while four in 10 don't think about animal welfare when buying meat, um, another five in 10 do consider animal welfare. So it's, it's an important concern to manage and provide reassurance about standards. In the qualitative research, it wasn't surprising to learn that there are many different opinions in the community around what constitutes animal welfare. Um, there's different perceptions of what is acceptable animal welfare standards. Um, many in the community don't really know the ins and outs. They just wanna have faith that it's done well. It's almost just like a tick box, tick box exercise. They just want the reassurance and then they can feel confident buying meat. There's a very strong perception that Australian farmers have higher animal welfare standards than overseas. And there's still the view that a quality product reflects a quality treatment of the animal. So again, we can't ignore the sentiment around animal welfare. Um, it's important to recognise that. Um, we don't want people to feel guilty about eating meat. Um, it's positive to note that most in the community feel that there are high standards regarding animal welfare in Victoria. 71% um, said there's high standards. There's also high trust that, Victor that farmers would do the right thing if left to themselves. 64% felt that have trust that farmers would do the right thing. Um, in terms of the regulations covering good farming practices in terms of animal welfare, most people don't know, 41% don't know anything about the regulations. Um, however, further 36% um, felt that the regulations were too weak to ensure good farming practices. And there's a quote from someone here who was concerned about the regulations. There's always going to be farmers that do whatever and have no regard for the animals. So it does have to come from a higher level and needs to be regulated rather than trusting the individual farmer to do the right thing. So again, there's a need to reassure Victorians and manage perceptions on animal welfare standards so they can have faith that it's been done well. Um, we asked about RSPCA because that came up in the qualitative groups as so something um, that was important to people in the Victorian community. Um, it's a strongly trusted brand in terms of animal welfare. And for most, it was actually just an easy way to identify animal products that are produced to a high quality standard. And it's kind of meeting those emotional needs that I want to eat meat and I want to feel okay about eating meat. And here's an easy way to identify that. So it just again highlights that there is that need to reassure customers about standards. And here's a quote here again. I always look for the RSPCA logo. The way they brand themselves represents something positive. They are products that have been screened, they are ethical. So again, just that way of identifying a product that meets certain standards. We asked respondents if they felt that the welfare of animals was generally good across um, farm sectors in Victoria. And you can see that there's very strong agreement about this. The highest level agreement of agreement was for wool, dairy, beef and lamb. And while over 50% agree for eggs, pork and chicken, um, you can see that there's slightly less agreement. And this was mainly drew, this was mainly because of concerns over space restrictions for chickens and indoor confinement of farm animals. So consumers seem to be much more aware of those conditions. Um, a lot of people talked about buying eggs in a certain way because they felt that it met, met certain standards. We also looked at specific issues around animal welfare and the dark green here again represents extremely concerned. And as you can see, animal welfare practices that have high concern are the treatment of farm animals on live export ships, stock mortalities, um, with around half of Victorians being highly concerned about those two things. Around one third are concerned with abattoirs, domestic transport and treatment of animals on farms and mortalities under everyday conditions. 
So while these are a minority for the, um, the transport domestically, treatment of farm animals on farms and stock mortalities, it's a sizable minority and shows that it is an, an issue that needs to be addressed. So in our qual research, and not surprisingly, most found out about these issues through mainstream media. And so even though people acknowledge that, yes, they were being told one side of the story, they did still feel like it had some influence on their opinions. So again, for most Victorians who aren't going out of their way to find out information about farms, they're kind of passively being fed this information from the media. So there is a need to fill in the information vacuum about these issues and promote the fact that there are high standards across these industries. Again. So in terms of how farmers feel about um, animal welfare issues, um, well, over half feel that the main people concerned about animal welfare are animal welfare activists. The majority do agree, 78% do agree that there is growing concern within the community about animal welfare. Um, but positively, um, farmers are really confident about their practices, 98% said that they farmed in a way that minimises unnecessary pain or suffering. And the majority feel that farm animals are being well looked after in Victoria and not, not much needs to change. So again, the reassurance piece to the community about the fact that farmers are adhering to high quality standards. So the second issue we looked at was chemical use and the um, community's um, perceptions of chemical use on Victorian farms. And again, as I highlighted in the intro, there's just high levels of concern over chemical use. Um, there are equally high level of concern about pesticides, growth hormones and antibiotics. So ideally Victorians would like uh, organic methods to be used, but actually in reality, only um, a third would act were actually currently buying organic foods. Um, the focus group participants talked about the fact that it's a lack of understanding is driving their anxiety. Uh, it's not necessarily something they want to find out about, but they know they don't know much. And so while they recognise there is a need to use pesticides and herbicides to ensure production, um, because they don't really know what's being used and they're uncertain and it's about their health, it's, it, it's sort of driving this kind of um, low level anxiety. Um, in terms of organic food, most actually question the standards and the price of organically produced food. They're unsure whether it was worth the money. Um, so in terms of this, and there's a really good quote here, I do think about it and I worry about the farmer's safety in terms of chemicals. I worry with the way food is consumed. I worry about what's going into our children. So again, that's sort of high level of worry because they just don't really know enough. Um, so again, it's reassurance that farmers are adhering to high quality standards to alleviate the worry. It's a bit like having the tick box. This has been produced to a certain standard and um, you don't need to worry. And we spoke to farmers about whether the profitability of their farms would be impacted if they didn't use chemicals. Um, the majority agree that it would be, that it was an important part of production. And very few people believe, very few farmers believe that organic certification is worthwhile. It's very much seen as a niche market at the moment. Um, and farmers felt that most Victorians um, weren't willing to pay the extra price to pay for organic food. And also that it was very difficult to produce food without the use of chemicals. So again, that piece around continuing to make it easy for consumers to feel reassured about how chemicals are used. And consumers don't wanna go into the ins and outs of chemicals. They just wanna feel reassured that their standards being applied. So lastly, the other issue we looked at was environmental sustainability. So there was a high level of concern about the impact of climate change on the future of farming. And there was much less concern that climate change was contributing, that sorry, that um, farming, Victorian farming was contributing to climate change. So the concern was more about environmental impact, sorry, the climate change on the future of farming rather than the other way around. And I thought this quote was really good to look at. This is what we want the community to feel. The farms I visit are resilient. They think about the future 
and how to be efficient in terms of reduction. Family funds look to the future and consider issues around sustainability. And if they want to continue on, they understand the need to be up to date with technology and methods. So that's the kind of attitude we want the community to hold, where they really believe that farmers are addressing these issues and have faith. So again, in the community um, campaign, it's about highlighting the changes undertaken to farm sustainability and due to changing, due to changing conditions, for example, water efficiency measures. So Victorian farmers agree, 99% agree that they try and do the right thing for the environment um, and, and farm in a sustainable way. And the majority also agree that farmers have a significant role in protecting native plants and animals. So very much the case that Victorian farmers are responding to sustainability issues. And then we looked into um, farmers' practical responses around the three issues that we looked at. So as you can see, we asked farmers whether or not they'd made changes to their farming practices in the past five years to deal with environmental sustainability, animal welfare, and the use of chemicals. And as you can see, the majority of farmers have made changes um, in the last five years to address these issues, with 79% have made some changes around environmental sustainability, 69% have made changes around animal welfare, and 63% have made changes around their use of pesticides or herbicides. And for about one third of farmers, um, community concerns had an influence in this. Um, farmers talked about other influences being making their farms more sustainable and looking at profit as well, efficiencies. So the types of changes that were made, and there was, as you can imagine, a huge realm of changes. Um, I've just picked out, picked out the ones that were um, sort of the responses above 10% of farmers. 34% um, were engaging in tree planting, land regeneration. There's a focus on improved animal health management, um, looking at having a more sort of sensible approach to um, use of chemicals to improve soil, using organic chemicals to be safer. Um, and infrastructure changes, redesigning stockyards, feedlots in shaded areas, and safe windbreaks. So the other piece we did to inform the communication strategy was uh, segmentation. And the purpose of a segmentation is to group sort of like-minded people together um, so we understand where the key concerns are and we can address them within a communication strategy. Um, it also allows us to have um, targeted messaging. So the segmentation was based on three factors, um, trust with farmers, engagement with food production and concern about farming practices. Um, just to note that across the segments, we have six segments here, across all six segments, there were high levels of positivity towards farmers. The top three segments here, the first three, assured conscientious supporter and concerned supporter, they were highly supportive of farmers. Um, segments four, five and six were somewhat, were more likely to be somewhat supportive of farmers. In terms of the size of the segmentation, they're fairly even in their sizes. Um, and I'll just take you through briefly through the six segments and then I'll take you in a bit more detail. So the first segment is the assured segment. Um, they're highly supportive of farmers and they have a high trust that farmers are doing the right thing and they make up 11% of um, Victorian community. Segment number two is a conscientious supporter. They're highly engaged in agricultural issues, but they have a strong trust in farmers and a very low concern about current farming practices and they make about 18% of the Victorian community. The next segment is the concerned supporter. They're also highly engaged in farming issues, um, but they have high concern over farming practices, but they're very sympathetic towards farmers. So they're very positive about farmers they try and buy locally. And they make, about, they make up about 16% of the Victorian community. The fourth segment is our disengaged segment. Um, they have a very low interest in food production. Um, they just want to go to the supermarket and buy their food. Um, they don't really think about farmers. They have a low concern about farming practices, but generally trust farmers to do the right thing and don't really see a need for change. 
as segment number five, um, we've called uneasy disengaged. Again, this group has low engagement in food production and they're not really that interested in farming, but they have some sort of overall concern about environmental sustainability with farms, but they don't really know a lot about the specific issues. They also do see a need for change and they make up about 19% of the Victorian community. And lastly, we have our highly concerned segment. Um, they have very high engagement in agricultural issues. Um, they're concerned about current farming practices and they have a lower trust that farmers are doing the right thing. Um, and they make up about 18% of the Victorian community. So I'll just go through the segments in a bit more detail. And on the right of each slide, we've just put down some key um, measures. Um, so it's around how engaged they are with farming. So give a lot of thought to how their food is produced is one. Um, the trusting farmers is the second. Trusting farmers about animals, trusting farmers in regards to protecting the environment. And lastly, whether or not they think change needs to be made. So in terms of our assured segment, um, they're highly supportive of farmers and trust that farmers do the right thing. No concern about current farming practices. They are concerned with too much red tape being put on farmers, and they're also concerned with foreign ownership of farms. A second segment, the conscientious supporter. They're, they're also informed about farming practices. They give a lot of thought to how their food, food is produced. They feel very positive towards farmers. They think about how food is produced. Um, they do have some concern with animal welfare. Um, they think it's an important issue that needs to be addressed, but they generally trust that farmers are doing the right thing. They try to buy products with RSPCA approval. They think that's a very credible brand. Um, they have some concerns with the use of pesticides in food and try and avoid them if possible. Our next segment, segment three, is the concern supporter. Again, very positive towards Victorian farmers and they try and buy locally as much as they can to support farmers. They have moderate trust that farmers treat farm, farm animals um, humanely. Um, they have, high levels of con they have high levels of concern about specific issues. So they were most likely to be concerned around live animal export, transport of animals and abattoirs. And they do feel that standards needs to be strengthened in these areas to improve animal welfare. And they're making some changes to their purchasing behavior to reflect those concerns, like maybe reducing some of their consumption of meat. Um, they're also buying yeah, free range chicken and RSPCO products. The disengaged segment, um, they're somewhat positive towards farmers. Um, they don't really give any thought to how their food is produced. They're less likely to buy locally to support farmers. Um, and they're not concerned with corporate or foreign ownership of farms. They don't really think too much about how farming is conducted. Um, they don't know much about farming um, and they haven't engaged with any of the issues around farming. They're comfortable with current farming practices and really don't see a need for any change. Are uneasy disengaged. They tend to be a bit younger and living in inner um, metro. They also don't really give much thought to how their food is produced and tend not to have any connection to farming. They just don't know a lot about farming. Um, they don't think about animal welfare when they're shopping. Um, they don't know a lot about the specific issues. I think there's more important things to think about than animal welfare. Um, however, they're more likely to be concerned that farming in Australia is contributing to climate change. But again, they don't know, they're not concerned or they don't know a lot about specific issues. Um, and they also think that farmers are quite traditional and a lot needs to change. Um, they tend to be on social media and they're not really heavy users of other media channels. And lastly, the segment number six is our highly concerned segment. Um, they're very engaged with food production. They give a lot of thought about how food is produced. They are concerned about the welfare of farm animals, the impact of farming on the environment and chemicals in farming. Although they're somewhat positive towards Victorian farmers, they have little trust in farmers doing the right thing and they feel that greater regulation is needed. 
They are the most likely to take action based on their views, including changing their buying behaviour. And they're also high users of social media. Um, so although still a really quite a low take up, they're more likely than the other segments to become vegetarian with about 15% vegetarian or vegan, 7% were vegan. Um, they're most likely to follow animal activist groups, around 20% do on social media. And around 20% have also tried to convince friends about a specific position. And a third have signed a petition or boycotted a product because of their concerns about farming practices. So they are, although still um, lower, no, although still a minority in, in this segment, they are the most likely segment to take some action based on their views, um, some actions in terms of some advocacy actions as well as changing buying behaviour. So in terms of the communications campaign going forward. The first finding is that it's a really good time to go out with the comms campaign. It's a good time to leverage the um, renewed appreciation of local food production and security of food supply that's come about because of COVID. So it'd be important to highlight the benefits of producing locally, which includes freshness and quality, but also the things around food security and also how it helps the local economy. So thinking about Victoria as a local economy um, is, is is a good time to sell that message in terms of um, economic benefit. There's also in the comms campaign a need to humanise farmers through real people and real stories. Again, we know that a lot of Victorians don't know the ins and outs of farming and they also, some also have a very stereotypical view of farmers. So it's about showing farmers again as um, being real, showing a mix of age and gender and cultural diversity to increase the relatability. Again, it's about showcasing family farms which are modern and adapting their practices to meet their local environment to address concerns um, and showing that farmers are changing. Um, and again, that's kind of combating that perception that farmers are traditional and need help to um, change and evolve. And the fourth message is that for many consumers, they don't want to feel guilty about eating meat. So they want to feel confident that um, farm animals have had a good life and were humanely treated. Therefore, the messaging needs to include an element of the farm animal. It needs to address the um, issue around the farm animals quality of life. And it can't just be about the quality of the product. There needs to be some recognition that the animal is, has been humanely treated. So you can feel confident that you're eating, um, you can feel guilt free about eating meat. So in terms of the segmentation, um, there's slightly different targeted messages um, that need to be um, communicated depending on the segment. So in terms of the, the segments that need to be a high priority for the communications campaign are the concerned supporter, um, the uneasy disengaged and the highly concerned. So they're the three segments we think you should target first. The concerned supporter, for this segment, it's about providing reassurance that animal welfare and the environment is being looked after by farmers. Um, this segment is already supportive of a thriving Victorian agricultural sector. So it's just providing that reassurance piece. For the uneasy disengaged, also a high priority for the campaign, um, it's addressing their sort of general concerns about farming on climate change. Um, and making farmers just more relatable to this age by showing modern farming, younger farmers, and just showing, I guess, an optimism for the future, because this, this segment felt just a bit concerned about the environment, but hadn't really got any hard evidence as to why. For the highly concerned segment, um, this is the segment that we're most likely to make change. For this segment, it is showcasing best practice in farming in terms of animal welfare, the environment and chemical use. It's about providing factual information about the current standards we have. Definitely need to support any campaign with a social media element. This segment are high users of um, social media. And I think we need to recognise that while some people might not change their over overall attitudes towards meat consumption and climate change, the aim is to generally um, increase their acceptance of farming. 
So we might not change their attitudes, but I think we can soften their attitudes towards farming. Um, and the, the um, segments that are, um, I guess, a second priority for a comms campaign is the assured segment. They already have um, very strong support for farmers. So future campaigns for the assured segment might be just about reassuring them about um, local supply um, and also something around the foreign ownership of farms. The conscientious supporter, um, again, they also have very high um, positivity towards farmers and also high trust that farmers are doing the right thing. So for these segments, it's just reinforcing that, um, reinforcing the good work being done by farmers. And the disengaged segment, they're the segment that aren't really engaged with farming issues um, and don't think anything needs to change. So with this segment, it's about reinforcing the importance of Victorian farmers to the Victorian economy um, to engage their support for a thriving farming sector and just the importance of buying locally. And that's a summary of the, um, the research that we've done. We've also got a full report um, that we've given to the um, VFF that uh, may be available also to review if you've got any specific um, areas that you want to look further into. But happy to answer questions now. Pat, did you want to open up to a group discussion? I think you're on mute. Sorry, Pat. So we've got a, we've got a question here from Scott Young and Scott's a um, VFF member and member of the Livestock Council. And he, he's got, he starts with a comment, which is win, win for us promoting farming. So I think he's highly encouraged, but he's concerned that the, um, the highly concerned group, so he's highly concerned about the highly concerned group. Are we ever going to change them? Are they, are they able to be convinced or moved in their current, current position? Mm. I think um, it's important to recognise that within that segment, there's a spectrum of views. So that makes up, I think it was 18% of the community. And within, within that segment, you've got some people that are making some fairly drastic changes, whereas within the segment, though they have high levels of concern, they're not making the same level of changes or they're not advocating. Um, I do think it's important, while I don't necessarily know that you'll change all their views. I think it's important to um, provide information about standards um, and provide reassurance about farming practices because I also think it's important to recognise that a lot of information they're getting is from social media. And I guess it's that issue around curated content. So I think we do have to provide an alternative view. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think we still need to connect with that group. Yep. Um yeah, so so they're not then we're not talking about animal wealth, um, you know, Animals Australia or um, any of those uh, animal rights groups here. They may may make up a portion of that, but they're not. And I think the if I remember correctly, that their level of vegetarianism isn't that much higher than the average anyway. Is it? They're still meat consumers, yeah. but they just they're, they just want to be reassured about where their products are coming from. Mm. I think, um, yeah, 7% were vegan, and I think from memory, 15% were vegetarian. That was um, significantly higher than the rest of the population, but it is still a minority within that segment. Mm -hmm. All right, look, I've got a question um, from Julia Horsler. She's, um, how do consumers avoid buying chemicals? And I think this question's mm -hmm. more about the generally the concern people have about about chemicals and mm. and, um, and the, the question is certainly the other part of the Julie's Julia's question is how do they avoid that and what was the question mm. asked? Um, mm. But uh, yeah, so in general, what what, what is their concerns um, and how do we reassure them that the products are safe? I suppose. Mm. Yeah. So the question we asked was. Um, do they try and avoid buying chemicals when they're purchasing? Um, and people did agree to that. The main way of doing that was buying organic food. Um, although when people talked about organic food, they recognised they actually didn't really know what that meant. And there's a whole lot of different, um, I guess, understandings and definitions about what organic food was. Um, 
And there's just this sort of, I think that just anxiety is they just don't know what's happening, but they also don't want to go and read a lot about it. They just want, it's like a bit like the RSPCA tick box thing. They just want that reassurance that actually that's been looked at. Um, you can tick that off. You don't have to worry about it. Um, so yeah, it was mainly through buying organic food, but as you can see, that's still a minority of people that are actually going out buying organic food. And actually one participant in the focus group, a couple of participants talked about the fact that they really are not going to go and write, read complicated packaging or they're not going to go and look it up on a website. They just want to know, yep, it's, it's okay to eat. You can feel reassured about this, um, your health. Um, there's a, 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 another question and comment, comment question from Scott Young, which is when, I think you came up when you were talking, and this is to you too, David, mm. uh, regarding um, a lot of people seeing um, farmers that are doing it hard. Mm. He was, his, his angle is um, do that sort of publicity, does that actually discourage people from, you know, we're trying to encourage people to enter farming as a career or mm. working on farms. Does that sort of thing, you know, which is the only sometimes exposure that city people have to farming was seeing people during a drought or fires. Does that sort of exposure, do you think that affects people's willingness to actually go enter or consider farming or agriculture as a career? Mm. I would agree with that. I think, I think in the, especially the Freya Chris groups, it came out so spontaneously, like every single group that they felt like it looked hard, it just looked tough. They saw just so many stories of farmers doing it tough um, that they definitely got a skewed perception of it. Um, they think that farmers are amazing people. They think they're, you know, the salt of the earth. They think that they're, they really appreciate that what farmers are doing in terms of food production but they also just feel like it's a really tough gig and I would definitely agree that it would be swaying people's view on considering that as a career yeah I guess from my perspective um, Scott and Pat and um, Steph is that uh, this is a survey or a document that's very much a moment in time. It's something we can actually measure um, how we move the dial between um, the, either the segments or even some of the key concerns, noting that um, we have got the capacity and ability to put a message out and noting that um, some of the more difficult um, segments for us or confronting segments are high users of social media. How do we actually gain or put that trust message out there? Noting that for me, or to, to even the understanding, this is a lot of about um, words and actions. How do we actually demonstrate that we're using best practice? How do we narrate that uh, through that personal touch? And um, and the question around: Do we use supermarkets to do that? Do we own that that message ourselves? Who should? How how can we promote that so that farmers aren't necessarily the, the there's not a commodity um, or a or an angle that a third party is trying to endorse or sell instead of versus the the trust angle that um, is coming up as the concerns in those three areas, noting that um, when we do talk about uh, the some of the key attributes of environmental sustainability, animal welfare, and um, pesticide chemical use. Um, we have got some really awesome um, projects and uh, programs behind that message. Is how do we make it simple enough that people can digest it, um, make sure that they're not overwhelmed, um, make sure they're getting the answers they need, but then also, just like every other industry, I'm sure that the mobile phone industry feels like that they're not quite understood properly and people would like to see how their mobile phones are created or, uh, or other um, manufacturing segments. Um, how do we make sure that the message is simple, easy to digest, and that when people do go into the supermarket, when they look at that product, that they um, have faith in it, have trust in it, and that um, that they do prioritise what's behind the label, that we have got good environmental stewardship, that we have got um, excellent uh, employment regulations, that we've got um, all these different measurements within the food sector. How do we make sure that as a consumer, when they see the Australian brand, when they see that Victorian brand, that they prioritise that um, as one of the key attributes of what they're purchasing so that um, it gives us as farmers intrinsic value as well as the recognition of what we do do. And then also, uh, the, I guess the last part of that is sometimes we get very hypersensitive, especially around animal welfare issues, noting that um, it was one of the key drivers that we, we went on this voyage of discovery with to, to understand that yes, it is a concern, but it's not the only concern and that the messaging can't be purely around it. It's, it's as much of 
uh, telling the stewardship story as a whole, the environmental, the employment, the, the and all the other great attributes that we do do. So, um, I guess the challenge for us is how do we package that into a nice little um, message and uh, get that out there as far and wide as possible. You're on mute there again, Pat. Sorry. Just regarding the um, the question is a, a question regarding the, how the survey was conducted. Is about uh, uh, the f farmers ranking uh, financial uh, hardships as one of the difficulties of farming, and the question was was this list pre-generated? So this was, in fact, a, f a list of statements which people had to rank as into highly concerned, etc. Was it? Yes. Um, DJ, um, look, we've uh, w w you know, one of the one of the people, one of the uh, key uh, drivers of this survey is you know a lot of the animal rights groups who are out there, and um, they've done a pretty good job at uh, get, getting and you know, targeting an audience and and uh, getting out there with some really quite some of them quite clever publicity. How how do we how do we as farmers and farmer organisations use that sort of, um, and this is a question to Stephanie as well, uh, how do we sort of, how do we become clever at messaging our audience? I guess um, the consumer, <laughs> respecting the consumer and their, their knowledge base is one thing and making sure that we're going the ball, not the person in this scenario. Um, <clears throat> It's very hard to do when we're the ones getting dogged and attacked <clears throat> in many ways as, as a segment. But to any time that um, you can put a clear fact, a clear statement out there it, and put it out early is, is really a much, it's an easier position than trying to have the defence um, position. Um, how far you go down along that chain or, or um, provide that information willingly versus, or, or, or trying to push it versus having the resource or the or the ability for people to easily find out that information if they're inquisitive is a balance and that, that balance is as much of resources or costs that we can afford as an industry um, versus then um, what that thirst is so i think out of this research um, getting having a bit more target around um, where we will do the um, uh, initial push on messaging, but making sure we've got resources behind that so that if people are interested, they can dig down and find out more. So that when, if there is another protest, say at Swanson Street and they block block the um, roads, uh, that uh, we can easily um, call on information, we can easily demonstrate that um, the, the cred credentials of the industry be a bit more organised to rebut, um, rebut the points that are made um, in either um, a, a uh, an un, unbiased way so that uh, if people do want to know um, how animals are slaughtered, that we can do that quite transparently, that people can uh, quite clearly see and understand it. So we're not hiding anything. Um, and then also when they are concerned around things such as chemical use or, or um, even our environmental stewardship, that we can demonstrate that we do as much as we can in each of those areas to make sure that the product is um, genuine and, and valuable and um, nutritious as possible. Um, noting that uh, we can't go, go, go organic and all organic, but there is a segment there that we do try to um, try to satisfy. But for me personally, it's about celebrating the choice that we provide to consumers as well. And that choice is if a consumer has a certain type of production they would like to support, we have that for you. If you are a price sensitive consumer, we have that for you. But all at all times, the minimum standard, the minimum expectations of safe food, um, food that's produced environmentally, um, uh, consciously with the environment in mind, and also those uh, other standards around employment and, um, and and being building a better community, building a better Australia, that that is the baseline regardless of your choice. And celebrating that choice for me is as important as um, rebuting or, or putting those other facts up. I would definitely agree with that definitely agree that it's important to highlight the choice and put out factual information. And I just wanted to reiterate that um, in terms of environmental activists, um, sorry, animal welfare activists, that most of the community take those messages with a grain of salt. 
So it's not like, I think we have to realise it's not like they've taken hold on most consumers' minds, that most consumers are actually feeling very positive about farmers, very positive about um, farming practices. So again, it's that reassurance piece that yes, there are these standards that we adhere to, um, we're taking care of our animals, the environment, and these are some of the ways, just showcases some of the ways we're doing it. And also putting out um, factual information. And again, as you said, David, celebrating the choice that we have, that if you wanna buy a free range organic chicken, there's that option. Um, but if you prefer to buy something that is um, a quality pro product, but more price effective, there's also that option. So again, around that food security. All right. Um, well, look, I think that's probably, that seems to be, there doesn't seem to be any more questions and we seem to be coming rapidly up to our, our allocation for this webinar. So look, I'd like to thank um, uh, everybody for attending today. It's been, uh, it's been a, a really entertaining, I think everyone will agree, really entertaining and really interesting um, journey and, and uh, the that Steph's covered today. And I'd like to thank Stephanie Jones from Canto Research and David Yohinki for, um, for being on the panel today too. Thanks everybody. So I'm going to um, call this off now. So um, thanks again for everybody and um, we'll speak to you soon. Thanks everybody, appreciate it, Tom.